Oh, hey, yeah. Welcome back to Shred Guitar in the 80s. Sorry about that. I was just reading my Hip Raider magazine from 1985. Um, There's this really cool article on Black Sabbath, one of my favorite all-time bands. But I thought it'd be fun today to get into some cool ideas. Um, one of the hardest things for a lot of us players to do is to be able to shift from medium speeds to fast speeds. So I got a little lick and some ideas and tips on how to do that. Um, get the old picking hand going, kind of style of Aldi Mill, and Vinnie Moore does this also. And then afterwards, we'll take a look at the rock scene in 1985. So let's get started. So I thought it would be fun today to address what I consider to be one of the most important things you can do when you're improvising or just with your guitar playing in general. And that's the ability to switch between slow, medium, and fast speeds um, within a phrase to play different phrases and have the rhythms vary, not just be, you know, right on the beat playing sextuplets or 16th notes or something like that. We're actually switching up between sextuplets and 16th notes within one phrase. Al Demiola does this a lot, um, the amazing Al Demiola. Um, I just covered him on my channel here recently, just an amazing player, amazing picker. Um, Vinnie Moore, I hear do this a lot. I hear Paul Gilbert do it. David T. Chastain does a lot of this stuff, if you listen to the old Chastain albums. And it's really cool, that ability to play 16th notes and just weave in those sextuplets at will. Um, so, in order for me to develop it, I came up with a little exercise or run, a lick that I use a lot, especially when I'm playing on my acoustic guitar and improvising kind of in that Demiola mode. But I thought I would share it with you and see what you guys think. So the lick is really easy to understand, it's really easy fingering wise, and we're just going to play these runs out of A harmonic minor. <laughs> get that neoclassical metal sound, which I love. So we're just going to jump up to the 15th position, and we're going to play three notes descending, um, which is a lick I recently showed here on my channel that Al Demiel and Vinnie Moore does a lot. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing three notes descending as 16th notes um, four times, like this. Then what I do is I'll play three notes descending twice as sextuplets. And I mix it all together, I get this. I really like the sound of that. And the key is to relax, tap your foot, and really feel that downbeat. And just phrase off the downbeat. And then you can move it down the scale. Um, it also might help if you really swing the 16th notes first, like. That kind of thing, that really helps. And what you really want to do on that is you want to relax your left hand, allow it to feel those rhythmic motions that I talk about so much, and relax your right hand too. And for me, when I'm playing a medium tempo, I tend to use a little more of a rotational technique of that thing and when I play the faster lines I'm a little more elbow so I just weave in and out but I it feels totally relaxed I don't really feel it different this is the kind of thing I practice all the time um, I do it when I'm improvising I practice improvising a lot that's most of my practice so I'm just putting down a loop pedal rhythm on a loop pedal and tapping my foot and trying all these rhythmic ideas always tapping the quarter note um, except for faster tempos, I tap on two and four. And just experimenting with this, and I've always approached it where my improvising has three different tempos I kind of can base off of any groove, a slow, medium, and fast. Unless you get really fast, then it's kind of slow and medium, and the medium's fast. But, um, you know, and knowing the rhythms, being able to switch between a 16th note, 32nd note, eighth note, quarter note triplet, your syncopations, all that stuff is super important. And I'll have a little bit different techniques for everything. I use my elbow a little bit at faster tempos and more rotational at medium and slower speeds. And I just weave it in and out and it's pretty seamless. I don't really think about it because it just came about from me improvising naturally. <laughs> Well, 
I've been talking a lot about 1985 on my channel here. It was just an incredible year for me guitar playing wise. I just graduated high school. I was fully into Ingve and Alan Holdsworth and getting into classical music and jazz and soaking up all the great hard rock and heavy metal guitar players that were coming out at the time. So I thought it'd be fun to go in my batch of magazines from the 80s and I have boxes and boxes of these magazines and pull out an issue from 1985 and see what was going on. A little time capsule review here. And this is from June 1985, so this is right around the time of the hearing aid. So thumbing through the magazine here, looks like the Scorpions just put out their second live album, Worldwide Live. Um, a really cool album, and there's a video, I think, that accompanied that. Um, I had that one listened to like crazy. Um, I was a fan of every era of Scorpions at that point. Um, I just found it all to be brilliant. Um, let's see what else is going on. Jimmy Page and Robert Plant got together for Live Aid. So that was pretty historic. That was a little bit of a letdown, I think, for a lot of people, though. Um, Page didn't really have his chops back at that point. Looks like Rat was just really on top of the world. Um, Invasion of Your Privacy came out in 1985 that summer. It was just incredible. Warren D. Martini's the man. I still love Warren. Just amazing. These old ads, even seeing the old ads is pretty wild. It's like Coney Hatch and Jafria was in this one. Except, it's your balls to the wall. It's your balls to the wall era. I love that album. I found that album just to be incredible. I love the guitar tone in that album too. Except it was a really, just a great band. I think they used MXR Distortion Pluses into a, a Marshall back then. It's like we got some Armored Saint. Um, really cool band. Motley Crue, I wasn't the biggest Motley Crue fan. I kind of liked... Shout it to devil, but everything after that, not so much. Uh-oh, here we go. This is the big one for me. 1985 Loudness, Akira Takasaki was my guitar god with Ingve at that point. Um, I remember cranking Thunder in the East up like crazy that year. Um, I couldn't get enough of Thunder in the East. I still think it's one of the best guitar albums from that era. Um, I have all the Loudness albums. Akira's tone's always incredible and it's phrasing. In fact, I'll be covering a lot more Kura in the future. Um, I love Loudness, man. They wrote great songs. Um, just a killer band. And Kura was so fast. I mean, some of those licks he's playing, it's just blazing. Unbelievable. Be covering a lot more of them. Some Keel. Was never a huge Keel fan. They were pretty cool. Billy Idol was going on that summer. You had the Mighty Priest. Um, Uh-oh. Another cool one. Deep Purple Centerfold. Doesn't get better than that in a rock magazine uh, for a rock band. I love Deep Purple. That comeback album, Perfect Strangers, was unbelievable. Um, the songs in that, the songwriting is just incredible. Got some Ozzy. Uh-oh, here's a cool one, Trouble from Chicago. I was really into Trouble. It had that early Sabbath feel. I found it to be incredible. I love Trouble. They're awesome. Journey, wasn't the biggest Journey fan. Great band, melodic, but wasn't really on my radar at that point. I talked about Black Sabbath. I love Black Sabbath. Got some docking. So it was good times for hard rock and heavy metal. Iron Maiden. Um, I remember seeing Iron Maiden on three tours at, by that time. I saw them on three tours. I'll be talking more about some of my favorite live performances in the future. We got Kiss. I was a big Kiss fan from when I was a kid. So a lot going on. A lot of classic, iconic bands were putting out stuff. Um, the highlight for me is probably the Deep Purple and Loudness in this issue for sure. Um, it's a lot of fun looking back. So, it is shred guitar in the 80s after all. This is kind of cool. I actually, this is the cover. It fell off. After all these years, it finally fell off. This is kind of cool. The Doug Marks Metal Method I always saw advertised. I never sent away for it, but I always thought it was cool. I remember one of the ads that had a picture of me said, Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. I didn't really know what to make of that. Um, I didn't send in for it, but um, I didn't hate him because he was beautiful. So it was okay, Doug. It was cool. But uh, yeah, he was into Randy Rhodes and Van Halen. But maybe some of you guys did the metal method lessons. If you did, let me know how they were. Um, I went back and watched some videos of Doug Marks years later, and I thought he was good. I thought it was good stuff. And he teamed up with Michelangelo and did the whole Speed Kills thing, so seemed like a really cool dude. But those ads were iconic back then. They were in every single thing, and 
it was totally glammed up and I didn't do the glam look very well because I was six foot six, almost six foot six. I'm a big guy and it just it didn't work for me. It's like the bass player in Twisted Sister, the glam thing's not really happening. Or Gene Simmons when they went glam. Um, it doesn't work and it didn't work for me either. So anyway, it was fun talking about this. I hope you have fun with the licks. And thanks a lot for hanging out with me. Until next time, if you like this, please like and subscribe. And if you already have, thanks a lot and have fun picking.